Well, Nicole Weider had wanted two things in her life. When she was younger, she wanted to make it into show business. And second, after she attained success, she wanted to make it out. Nicole Weider was just a young girl when she started following her dream of becoming a star. At 16, she moved to Hollywood and was soon appearing in some of America's top magazines. After eight years of modeling, Nicole had seen too many lives destroyed by the cutthroat industry and thought hers could be next. Nicole Weider is here with us now. Nicole, thanks for being with us. It's good to see you again, Oh, my good friend. to see you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been too long. Well, in your book, you talk about when you were a teenager and you first started getting into modeling, you felt vulnerable and you didn't even realize at the time that they were sort of making you into a sex object. Tell us what happened. So um, as soon as I turned 14, believe it or not, and I got my braces off and they started marketing as, you know, a sexy woman. And growing up, I was always, you know, I felt awkward about my body. I was very tall and skinny. But as soon as I hit middle school, I actually kind of, I guess you could say blossomed and I was 5'10 in middle school, and so, you know, my agent was marketing as older than I was. Right. And my first big job was modeling for um, the radio station Z100, and I was in a big billboard on the freeway. <laughs> and at first, I was so excited, but then I was looking at it, and the, the main slogan was, there's no bad date a good song can't cure. So insinuating, mm -hmm. I was going on a date, and then I was listening to the radio, but I was only 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And so I should have took that as a warning sign, but I didn't. And I was like, you know what? I did this big job. I want to move down to LA and see if I can make it, you know, in the big time. And so then I moved to LA when I was only 16 and signed with my modeling agent. And then it kind of all went, I guess you could say, downhill from there. Well, you say that you would often leave a photo shoot and feel like you were stripped of your, of your dignity. Um, yeah. Tell us about that. So, like I said, I was always kind of curvy. I mean, I was never thin enough to do high fashion, and I wasn't sure about that. Um, but my agent, she was booking me for lingerie work and swimsuit catalogs. And um, on set, I mean, I thought it would be some glamorous experience where I was having fun. and. I was so excited to book these jobs, but then when I was on set wearing just a bra and underwear, I felt completely humiliated and degraded because here I was on set with all of these guys and all of these people, right. you know, fixing my bra and my underwear, and it made me feel really ashamed of myself. And they were telling you to like pull it down and yeah. do other things. That exactly. Was, yeah. And when I was um, shooting with some photographers, they were always telling me, "Okay, wear a sheer shirt or cover up your, you know, your chest with just your hands." And it it was always they were always pushing me to take more and more off and so I felt completely degraded and humiliated and you, you did some work with some big names though um, Victoria's Secret a little bit mm -hmm. um, and some other big names what was the turning point for you when you finally just said I've got to get out you know, I would say it was probably when I posed for Maxim magazine. It was a culmination of just a series of different jobs that really pushed the envelope for me. But Maxim, um, and when I was a body double for Victoria's Secret, those were my last jobs where I was like, mm. I've had enough. I don't want anything to do with this modeling industry anymore. Because I saw my pictures on the internet and they ended up on just some different, you know, men's you know, porn sites, and it was just mm. disgusting. And yeah. I, I was like, Did you I do don't a cover for Maxim. Yeah, I wasn't on the cover, but I was in the magazine in an editorial. Right. Um, but the inter the internet had all of my pictures on there, and again, I was just wearing a bra and underwear. And here these pictures were, and I couldn't take them back. I was ashamed. Were you a believer during this time? No, not at all. Um, mm. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I didn't really have a concept of who God was. I didn't have God in my life at all, and so I was making my choices based on you know what I wanted in the world and what I thought was important for myself and I placed my identity in being a model and so when I decided I didn't want that anymore I was kind of left thinking what am I supposed to do now yeah and you started journaling tell us yes. about that um, well when I gave my life to Christ I was 23 and this was in 2009 so it's not even that long ago um, and it was the best decision I ever made and after I gave my life to God I felt a renewed sense of hope and I felt like my dignity was back, you know, back in my heart. And I started journaling about my love for God and my experiences in the modeling industry. And um, pretty soon after I gave my life to God, he put in my heart a desire to create a website for teenage girls to share 
pieces of my testimony on there and to um, be a light to girls and to warn them about the dangers of the Hollywood industry and about the modeling industry. And so I started journaling my experiences in in Hollywood and God placed the desire in my heart to share my experiences. And that, that website in, uh, is called Project Inspired, yes. which is also the title of your book. And it is an online community for girls. Um, and what are some of the issues that girls are dealing with these days? Girls, teenage girls, I really believe they're in a special time in their life because they're in such a transition between, you know, obviously just being a girl and then transitioning into adulthood. And the reason why God put it on my heart to reach out to teen girls is because when I was a teenager, that's when I really started to go downhill. And I didn't have a force of um, a positive role model in my life. And so I didn't know where to turn. And so... I feel like teenage girls are in a really um, susceptible time in their life. And so I wanted to help the teenage girls with the transitions that they're going through through high school and boys. And so my site covers everything from you know, purity and why it's cool to, you know, be a virgin before you get married. And I make Christianity cool, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I really appreciate when my book came out, You Are Prized to Be One, you hooked me up with a, um, a Skype or a live Skype with your girls, and they yes. asked me questions. And, I mean, you've got thousands and thousands of girls that are involved with Project Inspired. Yes, I do. It's amazing because this dream, this small dream of my heart, when I first started, I had no idea that it would blossom into the site that it is today. And now we get over 650,000 visitors every month coming to the site. This so is it's on your website. And of course, I follow you on Twitter and you always have great tweets and then <laughs> also uh, Facebook. So, you yeah. know, there's a lot of ways to, to get involved with Project Inspired. You talk about uh, living a Project Inspired yeah. life. What does that mean? So I like to say a Project Inspired life is a woman who is confident in who she is, who God made her to be, a woman who uses her gifts to glorify God in whatever she chooses to do. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I talk about the different spiritual gifts because we all have we all have some. And I also talk about, um, you know, praying for your enemies instead of, you know, trying to get back at them and becoming a light to uh, non-believers. And so I believe being a Project Inspire Girl encompasses all of these different mm -hmm. aspects. And we and I have to mention that you are um, you got married a few years ago and now have a beautiful baby boy. <laughs> What's Thank his you. name? His name is Elijah Benjamin. He's so adorable. I see tons of pictures of him on Facebook. There he is. He's actually so a little bit older than that now. But anyway, <laughs> well, Nicole, it's so good to see you again. And uh, for more with Nicole, you can get her book. It's called Project Inspired. It contains everything from her personal story to tips on finding the perfect pair of jeans. That's important. Yes, exactly. And then you can get it wherever books are sold. Nicole, God bless you, and thanks so much for being oh, here. Oh, God bless you, too. Thank you.